Hey, welcome back to the podcast. Thank you so much for listening as always. If you have not liked, commented, or subscribed to any one of my channels, it would just mean the world to me if you would. Uh, today's going to be a different show, not unlike This Week in Housing, where I'm trying to bring you data and news to empower you, to educate you, so you can go out and talk intelligently to buyers and sellers about what's happening in the market. Today, I want to introduce you to a friend who is really on the inside of all things blockchain, crypto, NFTs, and how it all relates to the world that matters most to you, which is real estate. So let's welcome to the show, Natalia from Proppy, founder and CEO of this amazing company. So Natalia, welcome. Thank you. Thank you, Tom, so much for having me. Hi, everyone. Yes. Well, so so I've asked Natalia today, my friends, uh, if you're listening or watching, if you're listening uh, back on YouTube, I've asked her to basically share a presentation just like we do in This Week in Housing. So she's got about 30 slides. And, and my intent for this show was to basically educate you, empower you, maybe move you from skeptic to at least a better understanding. So if you're sitting around the dining room table and someone says, what are these NFT things? You could speak intelligently about it. Or, you know, is crypto for real? Because I heard Warren Buffett say that it isn't real. So at least you've got another point of view and another perspective. And again, no one better than Natalia to talk to us about this. So Natalia, let's go right to your presentation. And just like in This Week in Housing, you know, you're going to talk and then I'm going to probably jump in and say, whoa, 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 give me the layman's term version of this. So Natalia, take it away. Absolutely. Again, thank you so much for this opportunity. And it's the perfect time to start getting to crypto blockchain NFTs. If you haven't been there yet in this world, in this metaverse. So I'm very thrilled to share the knowledge with you. A little bit about myself. I've been a real estate developer a software engineer, started my first company at the age of 19, uh, but most exciting part of my career is Proppy. Proppy is a real estate uh, in blockchain company, which I started five years ago when I moved to Silicon Valley. And I got introduced to blockchain in Silicon Valley. Even though I'm a software engineer, just like you, I got in this space quite late, but it's never late. So uh, in my experience, I was lucky enough to launch the first ever cryptocurrency in real estate, the first ever NFT in real estate, the first ever smart contract in real estate. And that's why I'm very happy to be here today to share the knowledge. Okay, so first ever smart contract, first ever NFT, and the first ever, what was the, the, first, the first of the first evers? The cryptocurrency in real estate. Right. So first crypto. So it was funny. I was uh, reading a funny meme from Elon Musk. Who's like smart contracts. Like, are there dumb contracts? H help, help maybe the person that doesn't understand. What is a smart contract? Well, the first misconception in the real estate industry to break is that smart contract is not a purchase agreement. It's a code, self-executing code. If you pay for a property and you sign an agreement, then potentially smart contract can transfer the ownership from one wallet to another wallet, from one person to another po uh, person without manual work of people to be involved. And have there been real estate transactions done this way? Yes, there have been transactions this way. The first one happened in 2017, where we agreed with a government that Whatever happens in the smart contract, they will respect this ownership transfer and they will record it as a, an official real estate ownership transfer. That was the first ever smart contract enabled escrow. And basically what it meant is that in smart contract on Ethereum, the buyer sent Ethereum as money. And only when we report the ownership change, the money went uh, directly at the same moment to the seller. And the same story happened with NFTs. NFT yes. sales are smart contracts. So uh, we're going to get into We're going to unpack NFTs and, and more of crypto and more of the metaverse and how this all relates to real estate. Um, so I'm, I'm, I'm like biting my tongue right now. So I want to ask you 50 questions, but let's, let's get back into the presentation and let's take a look at some of the things that you're sharing with audiences around the world. And then I'm going to interject with a bunch of questions. Absolutely. So what is common here? 
this is uh, NFTs and Bitcoin, all of them worth thousands and millions of dollars, each of those assets. What's mm -hmm. common here is blockchain. Blockchain yeah. is the new technology that will create a great impact, uh, not only on every aspect of our life, but the real estate industry. How? Well, with the blockchain uh, technology being distributed, immutable, mm -hmm. blockchain is enabled to create protocols that give power to the user, to the consumer. And right now, consumers are demanding all the services online to be powered by blockchain. It's their demand. They want to own data. They uh, want to control this data. They want to control assets. And the way it works is through consensus mechanism and all blockchain records are recorded on thousands and thousands of computers instead of one central authority to be able to fail or corrupt it. There are thousands of computers uh, that make sure that nobody uh, can ever um, destroy this ledger. And by the way, yesterday, Bitcoin blockchain turned 13 years old yes. and this baby has never been hacked. Um, blockchain works and for newbies here, every major coin like Bitcoin or Ethereum, they have underlying blockchain and they're different. So I was thinking about my, uh, my stepmother who I just adore. She's 76. She owns a ton of real estate. She's never really had a job. She moved here from Honolulu at 18 years old and met a longtime family friend, Billy, who taught her how to buy real estate with no money down in like 1902. And if I walked into her office today, Natalia, first of all, you would laugh because she's got like 7,000 yellow notepads and files, like physical pieces. I'm looking at like, uh, you know, uh, Katie on my team over here, like physical manila envelope files, like that's her version of the blockchain. What do you say to a smart woman like that who owns a lot of real estate that this isn't the, this isn't the future, this is the now? How do we help her bridge the gap? I think with uh, probably practical um, items, like it doesn't matter how old you are, you're using iPhones. These are user-friendly supercomputers that we have in our pockets. The yes. same is evolving, evolving with blockchain. On your uh, phone, you can have a wallet, you can have your cryptocurrency, mm -hmm. um, and then you start playing. And uh, again, it doesn't depend. It doesn't matter how old uh, you are. You can play games. You can communicate with people via Zoom. Um, so there, and there are so many aspects of blockchain, NFTs, and metaverse that everyone can find their niche where to dive in. Yes, yes. All right, well, let's, let's keep going because I'm going to keep asking a, a thousand questions here. So what are the blockchain applications in real estate? And I think for agents, it's very important to understand the key uh, applications so that they can talk intelligently with their customers, with their clients. First of all, you can record a deal on blockchain and then it becomes immutable. Immutability is the main characteristic of blockchain. And the future will come where instead of trusting the county recording systems, we'll actually trust the records on blockchain. The second one is smart contracts and NFTs. And we just talked about that. What is a smart contract for real estate asset? purchase, and then NFTs, I will uncover NFTs in real estate in a couple of slides. Then finally, tokenization. Tokenization in real estate means fractional ownership, where one token can represent a piece of a property or a project. It could be in construction. And there are many agents, many developers interested in fractional ownership. We will not cover this topic today. It's a huge one. It's, uh, it's, it's really uh, something that I've been asked by agents many, many times. However, uh, one item, one takeaway here is that any token that represents fractional ownership, uh, it's a security token, which means that uh, this offering has to be filed with SEC, right. which is doable, it's legal, it just takes time and money 
starting from $50,000. So if you're considering to tokenize your property, just keep this in mind. And there are about 20 companies are doing tokenization of properties. So let's go back to recorded deals on the blockchain. So you mentioned things like county records, and I think everybody can relate to, oh God, I want to look at this property, but what's this property zoned for? Or, you know, who's on title or who are the multiple people on title? What's going to happen to title insurance? If, if deals begin to be recorded on the blockchain, is title insurance or, or title companies really the, is it even going to be a factor anymore? That's an interesting question and we don't know. Um, potentially, if we have all the records on blockchain and we can track uh, the conveyance of all transactions in the past on the blockchain, uh, then the cases of title claims will decline. Also, manual mistakes will decline. But still, because we're moving to the new world, new problems will evolve and maybe we'll have to ensure this new kind of problems, which will be probably cyber attacks. Uh, what I'm seeing in the future is uh, an involvement of a new title insurance business, which be, will be powered by consumers and crypto holders, where you will be able to invest your crypto in a fund, in an insurance fund that will cover potential problems in this blockchain enabled world. It's, it's an interesting, again, you know, there's this, even though it's 13 years old, it's still so new. Like there's people that, that today are watching this that are just thinking about filming their first YouTube video, right? And it's okay because it's still new. Um, when you think about title insurance and you think about all the potential threats of what a title company deals with every single day, and then you say Bitcoin is 13 years old and has never been hacked, it's, that's interesting to me. I don't, I don't know what the direct correlation is yet, but I'm super fascinated by this. So let's, let's keep going. Educate us more. So the fourth use case and application as a separate one is the metaverse. I'm sure many people here listening to us have heard of metaverse. Yes. It's a 2022 trend uh, together with the Web 3.0. And I'd love to talk about metaverse in the end of, the, of this presentation. And now we'd go back to the real properties and yeah. how we can utilize crypto knowledge and cryptocurrency communities to actually do real deals in real world. Love it. Let's talk about it. So the first use case that agents can absolutely utilize today and capitalize on it is buying and selling real estate with cryptocurrencies. Uh, to understand uh, how to do that, you have to articulate the cryptocurrency and other uh, jargons very well because you're going to talk to crypto buyers and crypto sellers and you have to talk the same language. Yes. So the basics are that the cryptocurrency are virtual currency. They are decentralized. They're secured by encrypted consensus. Um, and the major coins are Bitcoin, Ethereum, XRP. You can go to CoinMarketCap and check those top coins. Propy is the other cryptocurrency that my company launched. Um, so you can check all those cryptocurrencies. Very often, uh, real estate agents get requests from scammers that are saying that they have X yeah. cryptocurrency, millions of dollars of X cryptocurrency, and they want to buy a property but this cryptocurrency may not exist at all, or it's, uh, it's not being traded, or the volume is so low that it's, it's basically just a manipulated token. So just, I want to warn the newbies here that you want to start transacting with top coins like Bitcoin, Ethereum, XRP, Luna. Right, right, good point. Uh, then very often you'll have to educate your customers what is a wallet. And uh, if you don't have a coin yet, make sure you get a, a wallet. Uh, you can start with Coinbase where if you lose your password, it's okay. They will restore yeah. it. Another one is Trust, very user-friendly, yeah. very secure. And also, once you get a substantial amount of investment in cryptocurrency, you may want to use a hardware wallet and keep your money, money in this 
uh, hardware wallet that is pictured here and put it in your safe. So the hardware wallet looks like one of those just memory sticks. Absolutely. It's the same yeah. size. Got it. And there are YouTube videos on how to uh, transfer your money from uh, a digital wallet to a hardware wallet. So several weeks ago, you and I were in discussion about this and you sent me a seven page like cheat sheet, like almost like dummy's guide to getting started with crypto. We should put a link uh, on my YouTube channel and on tomferry.com to this podcast to make sure people can download. Is that cool, Natalia? Yeah, absolutely. Excellent. Yeah, Excellent. there are a couple of uh, websites and applications that I'm recommending to start with just to set up accounts and see how it works. You don't have to spend money there. Uh, and if you don't have a cryptocurrency, start playing with just $100 or $10. And this right. is what I would advise uh, your stepmother to just buy 10, 100 uh, cryptocurrency and recommend others around you to buy 10 or $100. Uh, dollars. Because many people think that it's too late to get Bitcoin because it's now worth $47,000. And yes. they believe that they cannot buy a fraction of it. That's like saying it's too late to buy gold or silver or another commodity. It's interesting. You, you, you mentioned again, my stepmom, and I, I really appreciate that because I know she's going to listen to this. So I want to remind her that her grandson, Stephen, at 19, created his own cryptocurrency. Yes, my son actually came to me and said, hey, dad, I've created a cryptocurrency. This is what it's called. This is what it's all about. This is what I'm doing. And I sat there and thought to myself, every real estate agent on the planet needs to understand that a 19 year old created a cryptocurrency coin. And at the same time, right? So the future, right? Everyone needs to be paying attention to this. Um, the future though is paying attention to the most secure coin. So you mentioned earlier like Bitcoin and Ethereum. The one I hear about the most when it comes to transactions is Ethereum. Why is that? So Ethereum is the, the next biggest cryptocurrency after Bitcoin. Uh, the founder is Vitalik Buterin, who also created this blockchain network at the age of 19. Hmm. After being a Bitcoin fan, he wanted to create a blockchain that would allow smart contracts. And basically all those ICO hype in 2017 yeah. and the NFT trend in 2021 last year happened because of Ethereum. Yes. Because he created this ability of a blockchain to create accounts and to have this language solidity uh, programming language where you can build smart contracts. Would That's you say, why it's so important. Yeah, would you say that Ethereum just made it easier, easier to transact? I wouldn't say so. So Bitcoin um, is perfect to transact money, digital money, Bitcoin itself. While on Ethereum, you can now transact different assets, NFTs, properties, uh, any digital asset. And well, to create tokens. Yeah. Do you think Ethereum will continue to sort of be the mainstay or are there other coins that are sort of vying to be the next next? Yeah. So now there are many killers of Ethereum evolving and those are Solana, uh, Luna, uh, Algorand, proof of stake blockchains mm -hmm. that are cheaper and more um, and faster. Um, but Ethereum is planning to transition to proof of stake, Ethereum 2.0 this year. And so if they are doing it on time as they planned, most likely they will remain be the leader in, uh, for smart contract enabled proof of stake blockchain. However, they've been promising this for years. So there is a chance that other blockchains will have enough time to um, get more community in terms of numbers not only community of NFT fans, but also the community of developers, engineers who are building on top of those uh, blockchains. Got it. So, so if I want to be successful as an agent today, I need to understand first the cryptocurrency that matters most and the lingo, the jargon that people that would be buying and selling use. The next one is understanding, you know, a wallet, right? And then maybe creating your own to transact a hundred dollars, right? As an example, just to get in the game. It's funny, like I was uh, texting with Gary Vee about his NFT project uh, several weeks ago before the holidays. 
And and he said, look, it's just you just need to jump in like everything else. It's like you get a new app, you got to just open it up and start playing around with it. And then you figure it out. And if you're really confused, you go to the site called YouTube and you type in, how do I do this? And it shows you. Is that what I'm hearing? Absolutely. Totally agree. Start playing with that and you'll find your niche that excites you the most. And there are so many aspects in crypto right now that I'm sure you'll, you'll find your niche. Yeah. Love it. All right. Is there a third element that agents need to understand to be effective? Uh, so very quickly, mm -hmm. Uh, I will tell in the end that we have this course that teaches all that stuff in depth, yes. but very crypto. Uh, why crypto payment in real estate is relevant for Asians today? It's because crypto millionaires and crypto billionaires, they so much love crypto adoption that they'd rather not buy a home if it's not crypto friendly right. as a purchase. But right. they can spend a lot of their uh, assets of their fortune and they do want to diversify in real estate if they meet an agent that can say I can sell you a property in cryptocurrency that's why it's super important uh, you can do crypto to dollar transactions we support them on property we find you a title and escrow companies that are crypto friendly so it's all legal clean and clear and you can also do crypto to crypto transactions, which is very rare cases because then we have to match uh, a seller who's willing to accept crypto and right. a buyer. We had those transactions. They're rare, but I'm sure they will start evolving. Today, I think we're having probably hundreds, if, if not thousands of transactions in crypto in the United States. And it is slowly becoming a norm, especially here in Miami. Yeah. Well, I mean, we hear about it every day with NFT purchases, people buying, you know, the, the cool stuff, the trending stuff, the popular stuff. Uh, Melania Trump came out with her own NFT collection. Gary Vee's done NFT collections. Uh, you're hearing more and more artists now saying, I'm going to drop my record as an NFT or a, a song as an NFT. So I know we're going to get into more NFTs, but I want you to go back, back two slides. Back two slides, uh, that one right there. You said crypto to dollar transactions. This one or? The next, there we go, that oh, one. Sorry. Crypto, yeah. so crypto to dollar transactions. So you're saying uh, starting a transaction on property, third party payment process integrated in, escrow sends instructions to the buyer via property, buyer sends Bitcoin to wallet provided by property, payment processor, like you guys have broken this down and you're doing transactions, but my my gut is there's not a lot of them. No. You're doing you're doing lots of other transactions, but you're doing these specifically on property. Like how many are you doing and, and what trends are you seeing? Um, and what should somebody expect in 2022? So first of all, we're doing three types of transactions. The first okay. transaction is a traditional deal with a mortgage in dollars, with wire payment. Mm -hmm. um, we're doing those and we record them all on blockchain. So every single transaction has an immutable record on blockchain. That's the first one. The second one is facilitating those crypto deals. So they're about 1% only of our transaction, but little yes. by little they're growing and we have more and more agents signing up to our classes to guide them through the process so that they can talk intelligently to their buyers and sellers. Uh, but those, the first one, traditional ones, they are 99%. And then the third one is selling properties as NFTs. And for now, we did only one in 2021. And yes. right now we're preparing about five. So it's very small amount, but there is an opportunity, this, the third one, to grow into a big trend too. So let's, let's talk about that. I know you, you've got some slides on that. So help us understand, like, a house as an NFT being sold. Yeah, so before, Make this down we, before we get there, I yeah. think it is important to mention what is an NFT. As sure. you mentioned, all those celebrities are now launching their mm -hmm. NFT collections. Yep. And mostly these are um, collections of NFT avatars that you can use on social media, primarily to flex and to identify yourself with a certain community. So this one is a CryptoPunk, the first one, and the second one is a Bored Ape. Uh, both yeah, are very expensive. Let, let's talk, just, you, you mentioned the word flex, and this is exactly it. I was having this conversation with some friends over the weekend, and one of them was like, I just, 
I don't get it. I don't get why I would want to buy a crypto ape. You, know, you couldn't even say it right. Like he was blending them all together. He's like, why would I even want to buy this? And I'm like, the same reason you would buy sneakers that look like this, the same reason you use this watch or this phone, and notice how I call it a watch, that's hysterical, right? Or this watch, it is flexing. It is the car you drive. It's just the digital version of it. Am I saying that correctly? Absolutely. It's trendy right now. And the same way you have Tom Ferry behind you in Neo. Sure. It's yeah. It's trendy. It identifies you with current trends with specific communities. Yes. Um, and for but, example, yeah. yeah. Okay. No, but, but then like, wouldn't you then say, God, NFTs are just gonna be like a pet rock. It could be, uh, but there is more to that because NFT ownership is in your wallet, in your mm -hmm. phone, you have a wallet and you own this NFT and nobody can steal it from you. Nobody can ban it. No mm -hmm. government can ban uh, or transfer this asset from you. So it provides uh, fundamentally this freedom to the consumer, to the users that nobody can ever get access to what they own. So there is much more uh, essence to this whole trend than just flexing. And when I bought my CryptoPunk uh, by advice of my fiance, I also didn't understand that. I bought this CryptoPunk, a female version of it. And I was like, okay, it's kind of cute, but it's also weird until I put it on Twitter. And when I put it on Twitter, and when I noticed that people were engaging with me, and if I see that they also have a CryptoPunk, I know these are my tribe people. They understand NFTs, I want to talk to them. So it's belonging to a specific community. I think that's the key. Like it's, uh, I, I look at it almost like people that follow the Grateful Dead. Uh, you know, I was a punk, right? Like punk rock music when I was a kid. Like we were a tribe, we were a community. And even though there was sub, sub communities inside of that group, we identified easily together as a tribe. So, so when you think about art and you think about NFTs, there's also a collectible uh, element to this. If there's only 10,000 of these and you own one of them, you know, maybe not today, even though some of the prices I'm absolutely blown away by, but maybe in 10 years or 20 years that this is like owning an original Andy Warhol or a Chagall or some, you know, some other incredible artist. Hopefully anyone out there that has to create their own NFT, you don't have to die before it becomes super valuable like many of these things have. But is that also a part of this because of the exclusivity supply and demand element? Absolutely. That's a great point, Tom. Uh, those crypto punks are 10,000 pieces. I think 10,000. Right. Some of them are 3,000 pieces. They were launched actually three or four years ago. So it's not new. And yes. the reason they became popular is because they were one of the first collections and everybody wanted right. to be the first one sure. created on Ethereum. Uh, and they were generated each of those as unique piece. Yes. Um, so absolutely, there is an aspect to uh, uniqueness and collectibles. Mm -hmm. And even for real estate industry, I'm sure there will be avatars that are specific to to the real estate community. A hundred percent. And and almost they're almost to be an NFT for all agents. And then you've got agents at a certain status, right? You've got agents in a certain company. You've got agents in a certain region. Are you a team versus a solo entrepreneur? I think all that's very fascinating. I think where it becomes, um, I don't know, utilitarian, if that's the right word, more of a utility, is I can see in the future people trading NFTs for access to conferences. Like, hey, I'm gonna come to Tom Ferry's event, I wanna go to Inman's event, I'm gonna buy an NFT and it's gonna get me lunch with Brad, right, as an example. I see that being a super easy, relatable strategy for NFTs, at least in the short term. So it's it's less about maybe the, super cool art as much as it is like me buying a Mavericks ticket and having it in my wallet on my phone, which I do all the time. And I show up and beep, they scan my code and I'm the owner of that ticket. And they're like, you can't transfer that ticket to somebody else because the second you do, it's no longer your ticket. It, it very much feels the same way, but it's a, it's a utility and less about the art unless they like, you know, won the championship that I'd be like, oh, I want to save every one of those. Yeah, totally agree with you. And I will share how those avatars relate to the metaverse and the very end of this Please. conversation. Please. And now very briefly, uh, how to NFT 
a home and how the first world uh, real estate NFT happened. It happened last year um, with an apartment that was uh, transitioned via smart contracts in 2017. So hold on back up. So for the people that are that are audio only, uh, I'm looking at this and there's you know articles from TechCrunch and CoinDesk, the world's first real estate NFT. What does that mean? It means this this notion that the real estate industry thought it's it's not doable, it's not possible. Many people are debating about whether one day it will be possible. Uh, with a couple of clicks to own a property, to buy a property. Got well, it. with this NFT sale, it just happened where a buyer bid for a property and within minutes, he became the owner of the property as it, he has this NFT ownership on his wallet. And it's a millennial living in San Francisco who has never bought a real property because it's a very tedious process. Now... Yeah. Yeah. Go ahead. I know I'm, I've got uh, Katie and Brian, my producer and one of my rock star social media managers who are like, so they're over there pointing like, that's us. That's <laughs> us. Right. You know, like under 25 years old, you know, buy your first house. This just makes sense to them. But I'm but I'm going to ask maybe the stupid question like, you know, I own Ethereum, I own blockchain, blockchain, excuse me, I own Bitcoin. Those things go up and down. Right. I'm not sure if I want the volatility of those prices associated with my house. Am I crazy oh, with that? Uh, no, no. There is no volatility with NFT real estate because the underlying asset is real estate. Got so, it. for example, in this transaction, even though it was first and historical, yes. uh, we thought it would sell for fifty to sixty thousand uh, dollars. I mean, that was the value on our opinion, and we provided yeah. some comps and uh, inspection reports. Everything was done in advance. But we thought because it's a historical and there, there are uh, articles on TechCrunch and everywhere that it may sell for half a million dollars because it's the mm -hmm. first that could be collectible. However, sure. people know that it's real estate asset. Right. And thus we got the premium. It was above 30% uh, above uh, the value that we believe it was, uh, but not more than that. So I don't see we'll have those vol volatility uh, risks for the real estate NFTs. So, so when you think about NFTs, and I'm going to now space on the something C, Open C. Is it Open C, where we can trade? Like you could trade NFTs. Yeah, Open C is the platform where, where yeah. you can trade NFTs, so, but not so, real estate NFTs. Yeah. So, so do you think in the future? And now we're just we're we're just brainstorming what you know what could be in the future. Could you imagine an Open C? So for people that don't know what I'm talking about, just go to opensea.com and it's S-E, like the ocean, S-E-A. Uh, it will you, be in this document that you will draw. Yes. It, it would be interesting for you to go and look and see how, you know, literally every day people are trading these, you know, digital pieces of art, these NFTs, you know, to friends, to buddies, to random people all over the world. And I'm seeing transactions every single day on this. And I think... In fact, Tom, yesterday... Yeah. Uh, the volume of transactions on OpenSea was $250 million in one day. That's crazy. Do you think some of that had to do with yesterday being the 13-year-old birthday of Bitcoin? Uh, I think it's just the vacation time where people uh, thought, okay, I have to buy an NFT just for the sake of learning and, and education. Sure, sure. Yeah, I think that's interesting. Interesting. So I, I don't know, maybe in the future there's a a new portal out there where you can go and just say, I want that house, do your due diligence. It's going to be interesting to see like how we do due diligence on a property. You know, will that change? Will that be disruptive? Will there be a way to speed that up, get more access to the information that we need to make good decisions? I think the answer is probably yes. Absolutely. We're building that. <laughs> That's why I strongly believe in that. And it will be a number of real estate NFT marketplaces, just like OpenSea is not the only uh, sure. marketplace for art. There are tons of those. And same for the real estate uh, industry. And the beautiful part of it is that all the heavy lifting should happen before the auction. The inspection yeah. reports, disclosures, yeah. uh, uh, comparables, everything done in advance so that the buyer, they can see the property in real life if they'd like to. When they bid, they know everything about the property and they're buying as is. 
and then they can trade it. So here are the advantages of NFTs in real yeah. estate. The first one is NFT is the proof of ownership. Yeah. The second one is royalty fees. Because the seller and the agent of the seller are being educated and doing all this heavy lifting for the property to be ready to for the auction, uh, we uh, are building the vehicle to give them royalty fees on all secondary sales. So you can auction out your house today as an NFT, and then when it's being sold again, then the seller and the agent will have small royalty fees, very small uh, fees for uh, for bringing this property on chain. And then the the third. Okay, that's okay. Hold on, you got to stop. That's a really interesting thought. I mean, that almost makes me think, and and correct me if I'm wrong, that I should just take uh, every property I own and immediately just transfer it into the blockchain, right? Basically switch it to the blockchain. And then every property I own going forward, I'm going to get some royalty fee. And for the people that are watching, just to be clear, like in the NFT world, if you're not super uh, familiar with it yet, Natalia and I create a, you know, the real estate agent, you know, NFT, right? And we put out eight bazillion copies or four, whatever it is. Um, You buy all those, we buy them all. It's all super fun. We all identify it together. It's like our new little community. And then you're like, you know, I'm no longer selling real estate or, hey, this has gone up in value and I want to trade it. You're going to sell that. And once you do, we get paid again, right? We get a royalty on this. And you're saying now on real estate transactions going forward, the same rule is going to apply. But you did say a smaller percentage because I believe like it's pretty typical, like 10 to 20% royalty today for an aftermarket transaction. Yeah, for NFT arts, it's between 5 to 10%. With royalty okay. fees in real estate, it should be something reasonable like, um, 200 bucks for every sale, uh, not 6% for sure, not 3% yeah, for sure. Course, it would be something 0.5, 0, yeah. 0, yeah. Okay, so we're talking like maybe hundreds of dollars, not you know, not $10,000 or, you yeah. know. Yeah, it depends on the price sure, of, of sure. the property, but uh, it's it's a great way to, uh, to make agents willing to bring a, uh, those real estate assets on chain, on the blockchain, NFT yeah. them, and being rewarded in the future. Yeah, interesting. And then the last part you said you can borrow against NFTs, how? So the, the last part, which is very important for agents mm-hmm. to understand when they talk to crypto sellers and crypto yes. buyers, is that when they NFT their properties, uh, and sell them, the new crypto buyer can borrow against this NFT, use this NFT as a collateral and get their Bitcoin or Ethereum uh, as a loan uh, because for crypto folks who believe in, crypt- in crypto, they don't want to actually liquidate those assets. Uh, and thus it's a, it's a way for them to keep owning real estate, sure. but also have the loan in crypto. Interesting which will unlock a whole new wave right. of uh, decentralized mortgage and whatnot, but we right. don't have to, time to go there today. Yes. I'm actually thinking too, we, we might want to do another podcast on that as well as taxes. So I think that's one of the things, there's just a lot of confusion around, you know, how is it taxed? When is it taxed? You know, and when you start talking about, you know, trading NFTs, potentially what's a taxation, we won't get into it now, but if you're more interested, make sure you leave it in the comments and we'll do another show just on that stuff. All right. So you're going right into the unique collectible NFT, right? Which is something I was curious about too. So let's go. Yeah. So again, NFT in real estate, it's uh, access to ownership, to real ownership. And this NFT, uh, we have the QR code that gives you the access to the ownership Uh, the buyer has to provide their legal name and their address. Uh, It's absolutely all KYC and AML process. That's why OpenSea is not suitable for real estate NFTs because they they, uh, uh, serve anonymous wallets. Um, And the way it works is that we have developed a legal framework uh, for the US transactions and we have developed smart contracts uh, to make these transactions very secure and in order to NFT a property, agents are coming to our platform, start a transaction as normally they would start on our platform and then they would put all the documents, all those heavy lifting uh, docs that I just mentioned to the platform 
and then we give access to all those documents to the bidders. So that's the, uh, the NFT process for real estate. And of course, we always explain that in details and help both the sellers and seller agents um, to understand all the process. Yeah, it just, it almost feels like the wild, wild west, right? Like it's just, it's so new that I bet there's someone listening right now, Natalia, that is just like, I don't get it. This is stupid. It doesn't make sense to me. You know, real estate is hard enough. It doesn't need to be more complicated. But that's like the person, you know, pushing the block up the hill versus the person that says, oh, look at this round thing. Let's turn it into a wheel and see if we can get a little more action, make it faster, make it better. I mean, the only thing that we know about the world is change is always happening. And all we're trying to do here is just get you into the lingo, get you into the understanding so you can just be that much better when you're talking to your buyers and sellers if it gets brought up. Or hey, maybe just have a conversation if you got a 19-year-old son like mine or a 15-year-old or a 25-year-old to say, what do you think about crypto? What do you think about NRT? What do you think the future is? How do you think it's going to impact housing? I'm having these conversations with my kids and their, their buddies in college all the time and they think the whole world is going this way. Now that could just be the, you know, naive, young, you know, 22 and now 20 year olds. But I don't know. I think they're going to end up ruling the world. I think there's a really good chance that this is going to become a pretty major piece of how real estate transactions are done. Yeah. The consumer is demanding that. The consumer is demanding that. But the most uh, important thing here for those who are new and very scared of all the jargons that I'm mentioning. Yeah. Don't be afraid. Just remember there are NFTs right. in real estate. There is this term Web 3.0 and there is term Metaverse. As soon as you know what's going on in the market, just the basic terms, um, I think that's that's a winning strategy for you just to at least be familiar with what's going on. You don't have to necessarily know everything in the right. just yet. So you mentioned Metaverse and I think that's probably the best thing for us to end on. So let's let's talk about the Metaverse. So metaverse, it's a virtual world and it's a very trendy technology right now, which means virtual real estate. Mm -hmm. Crypto uh, community is crazy about buying real estate in metaverse. Mm -hmm. And there are platforms like the Central Land, Superworld, Sandbox. Uh, in non-crypto real estate, one of those is Verbella of EXP. It's also right. a virtual uh, platform. It's a metaverse, but it's not crypto enabled. We're talking here about crypto enabled metaverse. They are becoming popular and they will potentially become the, I call them as the new social media, social media 2.0, where you can come with your avatars, with your pun, with your board ape, which will become probably 3D visualized. You right. can uh, do stuff with your hands, with your emotions, communicate to Tom almost as if he's in person. Um, and you can not only buy properties, but you can access properties or venues with your avatars. And you can build properties in those metaverses. Um, so it's something to pay attention to. I, I've recently made this poll on one of the big real estate groups and the majority of agents didn't understand that. They think that it's a, it's a scheme. Uh, there are too many problems in real life to solve before spend money on something that is not tangible. But yep. remember everything we're buying today in terms of new clothes or, um, or shoes or design, everything is not tangible because if you just scared about clothes, you just wear something that you bought 20 years ago um, so everything around us, as soon as it's demanded by the new generation, you have to pay attention to it. You know what I think is, um, the easy step in, I think about, like I was telling my team before we started this podcast, like, uh, I got the quest too, and I got one for Kath and I, and then for both of my boys. And, you know, maybe it's cause we all live separately now and it's a, it's a place to say, Hey, come play ping pong with me you know, inside of the metaverse. But if you don't know what I'm talking about, it's, you know, Facebook's acquisition of Lucky's company, Oculus. And, you know, Lucky, by the way, Newport Beach guy, shout out to Newport. Um, basically, they've created this environment where you can design the home that you live in or what I would call like the operation station of getting ready to go to a concert 
which I, you know, I literally signed up to go to a concert last night and then fell asleep because it was just, you know, it was too late for me. I'm an early bird. But like my point is you can go in there with the Oculus device and you have this full immersive experience of world-class golf courses, which I like to play, playing ping pong with my son who's in a different state and I'm with him there together experiencing this, which I love, or a client, Zach, who says, hey, play golf with me. That's like the easy step into the metaverse versus maybe saying, should I go buy a house there? Thoughts on that? Um, many people are still not experiencing the 3D Oculus um, yeah. version of the world. So probably some people would love to get immersed in 3D through the uh, goggles, uh, but you don't have to. You can play with Metaverse through 2Ds. And then sure. it comes to just buying virtual land. And just like you would invest in NFT avatars, you would invest in NFT digital land. It's a very similar process. You may make money. Of course, you may lose money. It's not a, a financial advice. But now as the space becomes very popular, you can both play with it in the 3D world and in a 2D world. Yeah. What about the book Ready Player One? Uh, yeah, I haven't. I want to watch the movie. I haven't yet. Uh, but oh. there are a number of uh, you, you recommend. Oh, uh, it was it was like the book in Silicon Valley, and I want to say like I don't know, sixteen or seventeen. Every tech company CEO or executive I was talking to was like, "Oh, if you haven't read Ready Player One yet, you're not ready for what's coming." But when I actually you know read the book, and then I you know I did watch the movie afterwards, and you know, I I will admit I actually think the movie was better because it only took two hours, just saying. Um, but inside of that, the metaverse actually made me nervous, right? I, I was actually not, not like nervous, afraid, like, like could there be a, a world? A, AI makes us nervous, right? Right, well, AI actually doesn't make me nervous. I get super excited about, like I, if Elon Musk called me tomorrow and said, hey, we wanna put this chip inside your brain and make you infinitely faster and have a better memory, I'd be like, I'm in. I, I will be your first, Elon, if you're watching, I will be your first. Like that actually excites me. That feels like the movie, The Matrix. Like, hey Tank, I need to know how to fly a B-12 helicopter. Hold on, and just like that, I know it. Like that, that gets me excited. When I say nervous, I was thinking about the lack of social interaction, right? The, the lack of being physically with people. And then I'm talking to my barber and we're in this dialogue about the metaverse. And she says, oh yeah, like my boyfriend will like, go out on Friday and by go out, I mean, he will put on his like Oculus device and he goes to a bar and has drinks with his friends, his fraternity buddies who live all over the world. Oh, wow. And I thought maybe, maybe, maybe I've got a misconception there. Maybe I'm, maybe I'm, maybe it is a way to create connection. I think it will happen. And I had this personal experience and on Verbella in one of the events where we went through uh, to a, a lighthouse and we were going up and uh, I made new connections. So yeah. in my mind, it's like, yeah, I was going up even though I was sitting in, a, in the one, one spot and I met new people. So I think it will evolve there. Just like on social media, we're getting connected and we're sharing pictures. In Metaverse, we'll actually be able to move and share more, uh, more movements, and more experiences and feelings. Uh, but I'm also, um, I'd love to incentivize the agents to pay attention to the space because right. it's a new opportunity to get new revenue streams in the future. Metaverses yeah. are evolving. There will be five, 10, 20 that will remain popular and there will be a need of agents who will understand specific neighborhoods, right. specific right. metaverses. So uh, I would recommend highly to get involved, if not buying those metaverse plots, uh, which are becoming now more and more expensive, if not buying, at least play with it, researching all yeah. those, and uh, maybe you'll be able to become a metaverse real estate agent. And one more point is why metaverse idea is so close to the real estate industry. Uh, the pragmatic side of it is virtual tours. As we've been pushing the industry to share virtual tours so people can experience the home before yes. they go there live, why not to really explore it in 3D uh, world? And metaverse will allow this very easily to get your goggles on and hopefully 
at least 50, 60% of listings will have virtual tours and you'll first experience them saving tons of time for you, for the agent, for the consumer, for the seller. And then it will uh, provide a better understanding of what kind of home you want to visit. I love it. As you were saying that I was reminded of even the, uh, you know, hearing about clients of mine in New York that their buyers coming from Dubai were saying, can you just send me a virtual tour of the property so I can make a decision? Right? Like, like it's that simple. Like that's the example of the metaverse. It doesn't have to be as extreme as what I want, which is floor seats at every Laker game for the rest of my life that I'm willing to put my Oculus device on and immerse myself in the game. I love that, but that's another example of it. Um, you have a course and this could be the first time I've ever done this on a podcast where I said, Hey, you should buy this outside of maybe like telling people to buy a book. Um, but you put together a, an agent sort of crypto certification where they can really immerse themselves in it. So give them the, give them the URL for the person that's listening. I would love for you to check this out. And again, be the knowledge broker, be the one that understands it, whether, whether you ever transact on it or not, probably doesn't make a difference, but you better understand it for that one time when someone walks in and says, uh, Hey, I bought uh, Dogecoin in January of 2020 and I put a hundred thousand dollars into it. And what's it worth today? Do you know? It's like, like 4.9 billion. They put a hundred grand into something. And that was just a year ago. I'm not recommending Dogecoin. I'm just giving you a stat. But that person that walks in and says, I've got some extra cash. I want to buy some real estate. I think it's important that we understand it. So what's the, uh, what's the website? What should they go to go check out the course? So it's profit.com, uh, browse crypto for real estate, or you can just go to profit.com, click the products, and then yeah. you'll see the crypto uh, course. Every month we have a new cohort and we provide new free education if you're already crypto certified. Every time there's a new trend, we just call our uh, crypto certified agents and make sure we provide uh, new knowledge on new trends. And the course covers eight sessions. Uh, what is crypto? What is blockchain? What are NFTs? How to NFT a home step-by-step -step workshop, uh, workshop. Metaverse is the new class for January 2022. Uh, and the course is very practical. We're creating groups and those crypto certified agents can communicate to each other, share knowledge. And it's all about crypto and real estate. Love it. Love it. Well, Natalia, thank you so much. And again, I loved how you said, hey, even, even I'm new to this, even though you've been in it for five or six years, it just, this moment feels like, I, I, all these thoughts going through my head, like sitting down with Gary Vaynerchuk in like 2008 or nine and him saying, you need to go all in on YouTube. That certainly paid off, right? Or friends of mine that said, hey, forget Friendster. It's all about Facebook, man. Like this is, this is going to be the one. I just feel this is one of those moments in time where uh, we need to just lean in. And whether it's this course or just, you know, going to YouTube and just watching more information, but like everything else, don't be a no, be, be open to what could be and be educated and informed. So when you do meet that buyer, meet that seller that really is in this world, that you can look at them eye to eye and have context for what they're discussing and be able to bring something relevant to the conversation. I think that was really the whole game of this podcast. Is that fair? Absolutely. Yeah. Don't cool. be afraid. Start playing with crypto. It will pay off. Right. Right. So Natalia, closing, closing thoughts as we, uh, as we sail this one out. We're stepping in to 2022, mm -hmm. the year of crypto and specifically the year of crypto and real estate. So be educated. Don't be afraid. Ask questions. Tons of information are, is available online. Follow Tom Ferry on Instagram. He's sharing more and more stuff yep. related to blockchain and NFTs. And thank you so much for being here with us today. All right. Thank you, Natalia. And as always, my friends, like and subscribe and make some comments. And thank you so much for being one of my podcast listeners. We'll see you soon.